everyone, my name is Erica and I'm the owner of Beach Babe Soapery. Today we are making Mermaid's Kiss Soap. This is very exciting. I've had this fragrance oil for the longest time and didn't really know what to do with it until my daughter, Scarlett. Hi everyone. That's her in the background. Said, hey mommy, let's make a mermaid soap. And I'm like, you know what, that's a good idea. So what we've chosen for the fragrance is... Persephone's Kiss from obviously Nurture Soap. It's a fun floral scent. I have the uh, soap notes from the website right here that says Mandarin, Orange, Melon, Blackberry, and Violet Leaf comprise the top notes of Persephone's Kiss, which we are going to turn around and call it Mermaid's Kiss. Fragrance all, followed by the notes of Lavender, Jasmine, Lily of the Valley, and Nectarine. Bottom notes are Fresh Honey, Oak, Musk, this is one of the best scents we've smelled, and that is very true. It is, it's a nice scent. And it's a, uh, it's from the soap testing notes that they say that it doesn't accelerate, it soaps perfectly. For their recipe, we're going to see how it goes today. Scarlett has chosen the colors of today's soap. And let's see, Scarlett, would you like to read the name of the soap? Andy the Money. Andy the Money from Mad Micahs. Right, Mad Micahs? Yes. You're Mad Micahs. Anyways, here's what the mica look like, looks like. Let's open that up. It's a fun little kind of sea green, sea kelp green color. And let's see, what else did we choose for today? This one's a little tough. Great Neon. Well, let's go with Grape Nehi, I believe. I can't even pronounce that name right. I just go with that. Yeah, we'll just, yeah good idea. We'll just go with that. So, thank you, Scarlett. Go ahead and go back to uh, what you were doing. She's helping me out organize some soap in the soap studio today. So, anyways, back to the, uh, the mica. It's a nice purple. It's so pretty. I love using this one. And guess what, guys? No Tahitian teal today. What? Oh my goodness. What am I doing? I'll be alright. I'll put a lot of Tahitian teal in the next soap, I guess. Anyways. Oh, I just realized you can see yourself. You see my camera, actually. <laughs> Not yourself. And the oil's there. Um, That's kind of funny. Anyways. That's what we're going for. Hopefully getting a two-color swirl. Let me grab my chopstick. Oh, boy. Bam! Got the chopstick going on. I have the stick blender all ready to go. Let me get that connected. So my lye oil is cooled down. My oils are warmed up. They're about the same temperature. I'm I'm soaping at a little bit warmer temperature today. It's kind of a last minute impromptu kind of thing. Um, but yeah, let's get started. I have my oils here. I have my kale and clay inside my oils. I need to give this a quick spin before I add my life solution. And I do apologize for the video quality. Let me just go ahead and say that because um, my camera just quit. Just rage quit on me and it just doesn't want to work. I actually lost footage to one of my, my previous videos so I'm like oh no what do I do so for now I'm using my phone which is it's working out I, I think it, I think it's working out good anyways let's go so bear with me here now when I soap I soak to get the trace just past emulsification it's not even a trace honestly it's just past emulsification because a lot of the oils that I use now I don't know how they're going to act and I want enough time just for them to swirl so that's kind of why I just kind of give it a quick spin but I'm going to add the lye solution now you add the lye solution to the oils to the oils you add this lye solution to what the oils never the other way around it's, it just becomes a huge mess don't ask me how I know. I spent days cleaning that up. Anyways, let's get this going. 
I'm gonna pour this in here. I am gonna have to move quickly, so if I'm a little quiet, um, you guys can just start singing show tunes to yourself and I'll get back to a chit chat in a few minutes. Now I'm gonna separate this into the into another container. Oh, for you guys that are like, oh my God, there's a little piece of tape right there. That's my marker for the camera. So I know where you guys are at. Like I said before, I'm using my camera so that the lens is off center from my stand. So now I can make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Hopefully, as long as I pay attention. I do sometimes, but <laughs> sometimes I don't. Now, now you can see the soap better, how, what I was talking about before, just past the emulsification, it doesn't even leave a trace. I wouldn't even honestly call this a light trace because it doesn't even leave a line or anything on top. And that's exactly where I want it. I'm gonna try to do that much purple. Or green, whichever goes in that bucket or uh, measuring cup. Okay, so let's scoot this back over here. I like to add my colors first, then my fragrance oil on the chance that my fragrance oil rices. It's not so noticeable, if that makes sense. It's, if it's going to rice, it's going to rice with some of the pigment. So if it's kind of lumpy, I can sometimes, you know, spin it out of there or you just kind of see a lighter version of the colors. If you add it in now, it kind of just doesn't absorb the mica. And you get white blotches in your soap, which is a cool effect. Don't get me wrong, but that's not what I'm going for. So let's see. Let's do green first. I said I want purple. Let's see. Yeah, let's do more green. Can you guys guess which uh, mermaid inspired my daughter to pick these colors? Let's see if you... I know y'all can get it, but why don't you write your... Uh, Answer down below in the comments. I'm going to use a little popsicle stick. Yeah, I want mostly green. That should give me a good color. Always put the lid on tightly. Even if you need, think you might need some more, always do that in case it, you knock it over. Don't ask me how I know that one too, you know what I'm saying? And some purple. You gotta be careful with purple micas. If you don't add enough purple, then you get gray. You don't want gray when you want purple. But some, you know, sometimes you get happy accidents. That should be good. But let's see. I'm going to Scrape this down in there. Oh, I got mica everywhere. Big surprise. Give this a quick spin. Start with the green first, trap that underneath there. This little bit of green that's getting in the purple is not a big deal. It's... Okay, so now that's all good and mixed up. We are, oh, there goes my computer screaming at me. We're going to put the fragrance oil in, in these containers, in the soap batter. And I'm going to hand stir them in first. Because I don't know, like I said, I don't know what they're going to do. But I have my soap mold off to the side just in case. Scrape all this down, make it look nice and good for you guys. Most of the fragrance oil is going to go in here. Then so nice. I'm not a floral fan. I'm more of a citrus kind of person. 
but this one's really nice. So let's see. So far, so good. Can you all see that? There we go. Isn't green mica funny? It morphs like crazy. It's not going to stay this mucky green color. I mean, if it did, it'd be really cool color, right? But it's going to turn back to that Andy the Money green color once it's done saponifying. You know, it took me years to try to pronounce that or actually been able to pronounce it. Saponification is something I have to think about when I say it. Oh, and you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, talking about micas and all that, I have exciting news for you at the end of this video. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to tell you, but I have to focus on this first. So, so far so good. No acceleration, no racing. Don't know if it's going to discolor quite yet. Oh, look at that. Got a little lumpy in there. Got a little bit of racing with this one, but it looks like I can actually stick. i just not stick blend it. Might need to. No, yeah, I go back and forth all the time with it. Yeah, should I stick blend it? No, really don't want it to accelerate anymore. I think it's pretty good. I think probably a lot of that was just air bubbles. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, this is still very fluid. I can either... Because I want to do some pretty cool swirls on the inside. I can either let it sit for a little bit and thicken up on its own. Oh, it is definitely thickening up. Or I can uh, stick blend it, but I think I'm going to let it do its own thing and not force it just because it is thickening up. Oh, see that? Got really thick on me, so it is accelerating. All right, time to pour. And it's most likely because I'm soaking at really warm temperatures today. Got to get some of that purple into the corners. And it's hot here in Florida. Boy, is it hot. And it's only spring. Oh. Man, this turned a mucky color, didn't it? Oh boy. It's always scary when it does that, but it'll be fine. I'll go right back to what it was. Woohoo, this is looking good. I'm going to stir this up a little bit so it loosens up. Excuse the big old container in your way. I'm going to make sure I get this in there. All right. I'm going to bang this on the ground for a few minutes. Or not a few minutes, a few seconds. Let me say that. Let's see. Actually, I want to save this amount of purple for the top because I got a lot of green left in here. This is a good fragrance, so I like this one. I'm just going to put the rest of the green in there.
All right, I'll try to get that out of the little spout area. I'm gonna bang this on the ground again. With my recipe, it's actually a little bit more than what the mold can hold. That's why it kind of is over the top a little bit. So I'm going to kind of figure eight, swirl it. With the chopstick, obviously now. Boy, did that get warm. Give it a fun little texture. Try to get the soap back in the mold would be great. Now oh, that needs to go on this side. That looks good. I like to do the I I call it the messy hair kind of. Uh, textured top where you just kind of dance the spoon up and just let the soap go every which way. Kind of like how your hair is when you wake up in the morning. My hair is just like everywhere. Oh, and the humidity. Don't even get me started on the humidity down here. Humidity just has my hair going all crazy. I don't even bother trying to straighten it or curl it or anything. Just ponytail. I'm good to go. Okay. That's good. All right. I'm going to leave it alone. I got to stop playing with it. And there you have it. It's not... There you are. Not very cutesy right now because the green morphed to that mucky color. But like I said, it will come back. Hold on. Let me get, take my glove off so you can see it. It will come back to this color within a couple hours, a day or so, but it'll be this pretty green. So at the end of this video, you'll see the cut of the soap. That's when I take it out of the mold and like 24 hours or whatever and cut it and you get to see what I did on the inside of the soap. All right, guys, see you later. Hey guys, we're back a few hours later. I wanted to show you what the soap looks like while it's morphing in between that muck green that I, we saw earlier in the video to now the bright green. Now it's not 100% morphed back. You see the tips are still that kind of mucky green. Those are changed right back to that bright green that we see on the towards the bottom. See, there's the muck green still, and then there's the bright green that all of that soap was. But that right there, that tip still has a little bit of time left before it's done morphing. So. Thought I'd add that into the video. It's pretty interesting. I thought it was really cool. So, alright. Hang on a few more seconds for the cut. <laughs> 